What's up guys, welcome to another episode of the Adventure Build. So, in today's episode, we're going to try to get as much of the metalwork and fabrication done. That way we can skin everything, get the trailer all painted up, and then start getting on to a lot of the fun stuff. Like the electronics, and the water, and all the other good stuff. So, in this episode, we're going to skin the trailer. I'm going to build the water tank mount. We're going to build... Uh, the rear table, uh, the doors, and kind of all of the major uh, steel working stuff. So, if that sounds exciting, stay tuned, come right up. Next thing on the agenda is our rear door. So let me show you what's going on here. Um, we already got the door welded, got the hinges tacked into place. Still need to finish welding them. So like I said before, I tacked the barrel on both spots, make the door, I use a ruler or some sort of shim to shim it up, make the door square in the frame, and then tack on these guys. And don't forget your little grease uh, bronze bushing. So you can see, Totally just uh, one finger operation, you know, well, that's not good, but that won't normally do that. Uh, it's a little tight in the bottom. Um, obviously the frame is not going to ever be perfectly square, but that tightness just means that it won't open as easily. should lock in pretty good. So here's our kind of semi-completed table. Same deal, hinges, but if you notice now this one is not removable. I welded them in and out so it can't be taken off. Um, and this will fold down. Obviously, right now this will continue folding all the way to the floor. What we're going to do is we're going to put limiting straps that basically will tie this frame to this frame. Um, and we're going to have to put a limiting piece going backwards as well because if I... Sorry for the weird camera angles. If I remove that ruler, you'll see that this pops back like that, um, which I don't want. So we're going to put a couple of little tabs in there just to hold it in place. Um, and then we're going to use a clamp to hold it from falling inwards when it's closed. And obviously we're going to skin the table and then we will have a table. Um, and obviously this looks really low, right? It's like this is almost at my knees. But this whole apparatus, once it's up on, on uh, tires, will lift up probably 16 inches or so. Um, and so it should be pretty decent. might be a little bit of a low table, but uh, it should work out pretty good. Okay, the next little task that we're going to conquer is uh, installing the water tank. So this is our water tank. Uh, it comes with, I believe these are inch and a half. These are standard half inch. These are already punched. These are not. So we're going to use one of these big ones for a fill, one of these little ones for a vent, and this is going to feed our uh, water pump. And the tank is going to sit down between these two frame rails, uh, about seven inches down. So the lowest thing is still the axle but it'll ride right in front of the axle. And what I did was I built these. These are just little uh, one inch angle iron brackets. And we're gonna riv nut the bottom of this frame so that this basically bolts in like this. And then we're gonna weld the structure to it. That way our whole underbelly tank situation uh, is removable with eight bolts uh, anytime we need them. And so let me talk a little bit about riv nuts and bolts. I like these. These are M8 stainless steel bolts. You can get them for very cheap on eBay. Um, they're strong. They're good. You know, whatever. Uh, and they kind of get them different lengths. They're about the right size. I would say they're uh, eight millimeter is like so quarter of an inch would be like six millimeter. So these are you know one size up or whatever off of that. But I also get a bag of matching rib nuts for these guys and if you don't use these these are fucking great i highly recommend them um and basically it does is it lets you put a nut into a piece of tubing or sheet or whatever and you can secure it to it and in my opinion when you put them in they're in there um i've stripped out a few over the years but by just doing stupid shit if you treat them like any other nut uh, kind of situation in a piece of sheet metal, uh, they're gonna be just fine. 
So I use them for a lot of stuff. So uh, I got all my holes marked. I'm gonna drill them out, get the rib nuts in, um, and then we're gonna build the rest of the structure from there. And just like that, our cradle is in. So we've got about nine inches of space from here down there, which is a little bit more than we need. Maybe put a little bit of thin padding in there. And at this point, all that's left to do is to skin this box. And as you can see, if we look at it from under here, it's, uh, it's a little lower than I think it would be ideal, but it's also higher up than the axle. So the axle is the lowest point. So the first, uh piece that we need to make is the floor this is 14 gauge sheet steel um, I got three of these sheets they're 4 by 10 sheets so we should be able to we have the width already so basically just need to mark it out and plasma cut it uh, and hopefully then just fit it into the trailer this stuff's pretty heavy duty um, but the flip side of that is it's heavy duty and so it's gonna stand up well to rocks and sand and mud and pretty much anything I could throw at it and it, you know you can hit it pretty hard and it's not gonna dent it's not gonna bang so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then we're gonna hit it with the plastic So just like that, the floor is in. Um, this is where a plasma cutter is super duper handy. Uh, made reasonably quick work of this. I still obviously need to trim. Uh, in a few places, you can see it's a little tight in there. Um, the back door doesn't quite close because that needs to be trimmed back. But the important part was getting this. This is probably the single hardest or single most complex uh, cut of this entire build was this floor because of all these support tubes. The roof that's gonna go on top here is uh, really simple. I'm gonna make that next. So here we go. We got the uh, rear recovery points in. I can't touch them because they're still super fucking hot. Um, I got these for like 30 bucks off Amazon. The link is in the, uh, in the dock below. I mean, they're pretty well like radius and stuff considering they were 30 bucks for the pair. Now, obviously this rear bumper is 120 wall. It's welded on both sides not what I would call a super, super strong point. But with these recovery hooks, um, they're really only there to recover this trailer. This trailer is gonna weigh around 2,000 pounds. Um, I wouldn't wanna do a connected vehicle recovery through those points. Um, I don't consider that to be a good plan. But they are welded in right next to the frame rails, so they are in the strongest point of the rear bumper. And the rear bumper is, like I said, a little heavier wall than the rest of the trailer. Um, but like I said, 30 bucks, obviously plus shackles, um, they look really good and I think they will be fully functional in terms of recovering the trailer. So now as you can see, we've got, uh, the skin for the floors in here. Um, it's not really secure yet cause I still need to do some final, basically a final grind on it. Um, as well as modify the rear bumper. The top skin is tacked in, um, but obviously my, my math was just a little bit off here. So I'm going to do a final grind on this, then we're going to do a final weld on this. Um, and then once the roof skin is secure and in place, we can move on uh, down to the floor and to a couple other little things before we get the floor welded in.
so the roof, we did a full perimeter weld. Um, that way it's gonna be weatherproof and the roof rack and something gets mounted to the roof, I want everything to be super secure. Um, it's mostly straight, there's a little bit of waviness, um, but that just comes with welding that much sheet metal uh, that quickly. The floor, we just did a perimeter weld in, so that's in now as well. And now we're gonna turn attention to building the um, fenders. So the fenders are gonna be put together out of just some one by one square tubing and then uh, skinned uh, just like anything else. So first step is I'm gonna take some measurements, do some drawings, and then we're going to, uh, to get these fenders welded up. So here is our fender design. It's pretty basic. That way I have space to mount a propane tank or whatever back here if I need to. Um, and we're going to reinforce this in here as well. But this is kind of the rough design and basically what I did was I just started with 9 inch pieces here and then built off of this. Uh, I'm going to finish this up, get it final welded, and then uh, move on. The hard part is duplicating this exact thing on the other side. But thankfully I wrote down all the different dimensions of the pieces I used so it should be pretty easy. There we go. Our fenders are fully welded together. I actually jumped up on here and so it supports my weight and I'm like 250, 260 pounds. So it'll let me climb up there. Fortunately, obviously with the wheels and the jack stands, it's not very stable. Um, otherwise I'd hop up there with a camera. But <clears throat> that looks pretty good. Next step is we gotta do some, some cleanup and then uh, Skin these sides is probably the next thing we have to do because those are going to be kind of big pieces. And then skinning the rest of it should be uh, reasonably straightforward. A little bit of an update. I didn't film much of this last part because it was mostly just cutting and grinding and welding and cutting and grinding. And there's a lot of that already in this video series. So check it out. So we've got the sides uh, welded in. I still need to grind some of these welds down. A little bit of porosity didn't clean it as well. We got the fenders mounted. Basically what I did here was I cut a strip and then I cut down it a little bit, not all the way through, just a little bit uh, in to make it easier to fold. Folded these down. These are actually strong enough to support my weight. Um, down here, basically cut uh, panels. You'll see this right here is a dimple die. And normally dimple dies face inwards um, to give a, like a more beautiful aesthetic. But I found that on off-road stuff, having the dimple die face up uh, adds a tremendous amount of traction. This is all just steel, right? So it's going to be pretty slippery in the wet uh, and that basically gives your boot a nice place to kind of grind in uh, so that you're not going to slip off it. So I did that back here, right? Got this. I did this back here as well. Uh, same thing on the other side. Um, back here, we have a few things we've accomplished. Um, I welded on this. This is what's called a horizontal latch mount, I believe. So basically like this, it's open, push it down, that way it closes in there. So if we open it up, um, I still need to get washers for these. But we basically used rivet nuts and some of our stainless steel hardware and some just uh, aircraft cable wrapped in this kind of green plastic stuff. And it does that, and that's why I need a washer. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, there we go. But just like that, we have our table, it's all set up. Um, it's nice and secure. So if I fold this up real quick, basically just latch that in like that. Next we can uh, close this up. Oops, I'm gonna have to think of something for that. Um, back here, basically what I did was I wanted a padlock on this one because the other doors will have locking latches. This one isn't designed to accommodate that. So what we've done here is basically made a padlock. This is like, um, I think probably 3 16 or maybe even quarter steel. Um, and once there's a padlock on here, you're not getting it apart. And then I got these really cool mounts that basically just clip on like this and then kind of uh, ratchet themselves tight. And they have this little locking tooth back here, which is also kind of a nice feature. So you can just like that even with one hand on the camera so it's kind of a, a bigger view um, the next thing we gotta do is we gotta skin this back door which is gonna be a little bit complicated because we gotta make cutouts for for some of this stuff and um, skin the inside of the table then I'm gonna have to go back to the steel yard to 
get another sheet of this 14 gauge steel because we ran out. I don't have enough to do the water tray under there and this kind of front and side areas. Um, but other than that, it's coming together quite nicely um, and the plasma cutter is making quick work of the 14 gauge steel. Another long evening. Let me give you guys an idea of what I got done. So, so you can see the back panel is fitted. We made it extra large so it closes up all the gaps. Um, it's not a perfect like hermetic fit, but it should keep all the dust and sand and grit and stuff like that out. Um, so we've got our levers, unlock them, pull the door open. Inside the door you can see it swings with one hand on those big hinges. Pop the lever, drop down our table, and there you go. The table is welded. I'm going to dress these welds a little better. Um, and then I don't know what I'm going to coat this with. The rest of the trailer is getting a coat of Pour 15. I might coat this with shark skin or something and just brush it down and let it remain like kind of a natural steel. Um, I don't want it to rust, obviously, but I do want it to look kind of cool. So this whole back end is complete. Um, the next thing we're going to have to do after this, and you see this just latches down. Um, one thing I don't like is these seem to keep trying to pop out, so I may try to figure out a way of keeping them further in. But as you can see, this is kind of fully perimeter sealed. Um, and this closes like that. You can see it closes pretty flush by hand. And these, um, they've gotten a little warped with heat. I need to grease them. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed actually, but like fit, like that. And these have that extra latch that locks them so you can't open them um, on accident. You know, nothing pulling on this is going to open it without clicking the safety latch. So that's kind of all the progress for today. Again, not a whole lot except for just a uh, little bit of welding, a little bit of plasma cutting. Unfortunately, I'm out of uh, C25. So I'm going to call it a night and uh, tomorrow I'll have to stop by the welding supply and get some more. So a couple more updates. We got the doors skinned. The other thing was I cut small strips, filled this in. These are finish welded on both sides uh, because it's almost impossible to get to the back side of this. So I'm not going to be able to seam seal in here very well. So I just went ahead and finish welded them. Um, same thing goes up here. Kind of the trick to doing these compound curves if you don't have a, a sheet metal break, which I don't, is to basically tack one side of it, hammer on the edges, tack, hammer some more, tack, and basically just go crazy. Uh, this one came out a little bit better. It's a little bit smoother. Um, and then obviously I finish welded all of this as well. Um, this door is also on, obviously. And then this piece right here is also finish welded. Um, we still have to do some more work on the water, but as you can see back here, we got the jacks welded in place. This is up in the air right now. Um, so these have really helped stabilize this build a lot. It makes it easier for me to work on because it's not moving around quite as much. Um, and that's pretty much it for the heavy kind of sheet metal fab um, for this episode. I really like the way all this turned out. All the hinges are nice and smooth. Um, and once we have the doors in here, these will lock pretty nicely. Okay, I wanna thank you guys for watching. That's it for this video. Um, we've completed the majority of the sheet metal fabrication in this video. There's a few more things that'll get covered later on. Um, but we're really pretty far along. As you can see, the trailer's pretty well assembled behind me. I apologize for kind of the lack of welding and cutting shots in the last few videos, but I've been doing a lot of this work in the evenings where I only had an hour or an hour and a half to work on things. Um, and I just didn't have time to set up the cameras for all of that. Plus to me, watching a guy weld and grind repetitively isn't really all that exciting. Um, and I've shown you kind of what the finished product here is. So I hope that works out. Um, in the next video, we will be building the multi-axis hitch. Um, and then I'm going to do a few things in the background, bring you guys up to date, and then we're going to start on all the major systems. So the water system, the electrical system, um, the propane system, and kind of all the other bits and pieces that need to, need to happen for this trailer to be completed. 
If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like this channel, if you want to see more of these videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. Um, I will post videos just as quickly as, as I'm able to produce them. I want to thank you guys for watching. Peace!